I've tried squishy painting on a canvas and on a cardboard puzzle before. So let's try it on a wooden cube puzzle this time. I got this block puzzle either from the real center or a flea market. Can't remember, but it's promotional merch for a new part of town and a little boring. So let's try turning it a bit more interesting. I'm covering and priming the cubes with white gesso, painting three sides at once and letting it dry for a bit before tackling the three other sides and priming each side twice. Then I'm painting the background colors. I'll just do a solid color on most sides, but let's try a gradient on one of the sides. And we're getting to the good part. It might be a good idea to tie the blocks together somehow to make this work, maybe with tape or a rubber band or string or velcro like I'm doing here to make them stay in place. Then I'm adding the dots of paint. I'm using the more fluid paints I have this time to see how it goes. I'll do different color combinations on each side. I've now tried this method on canvas, watercolor paper, coated cardboard, so I'm interested to see how it turns out on wood. Most of the more fluid paints I have are unfortunately less opaque, so after seeing the results of this first side, I'm thinking maybe the best combination for this would be opaque but fluid paints. I still like how this turned out, it's just more of a faded look. I'm dragging the excess paint onto watercolor paper that I already used for previous squeegee paintings and I'm letting the blocks dry well before moving on to the next side. It's a little problematic because it's thick paint and takes a long time to dry. And it's interesting, as some people pointed out in the previous videos, that it works better on watercolor paper than canvas. I first thought that's because it's smoother, but the wooden cubes are smooth, but they're also hard, so maybe it's more of a case of how absorbent the surface is. The paper is going to soak up more paint than primed wood or canvas or cardboard. For the second one, I swapped out almost all paints for the opaque ones and was less heavy-handed with the squeegee. I only kept the dark blue since that one worked pretty well. And I much prefer this one. I did have to let it dry for longer since the paint layers are thicker. Also, as a reminder, I do clean off the squeegee with paper and wash it with soap and water after each use to keep it clean so the acrylic paint won't dry on it. The metallics seem to work well, so I'm doing one side with just them and white. I link below all the paints I used. I didn't realize the cubes were cut differently. Some pieces have different kinds of edges, but I'm kind of ignoring it in the placement of the blocks. The squeegee isn't exactly even, so it's not touching the wood all the way and the result turns out a bit uneven, but I don't actually mind how it looks. I did one with blues, white and pink, no metallics and not completely symmetric this time. I'm probably giving these to my nephew, so I'll varnish them afterwards so the paints hopefully won't rub off when they're used. And this side is yellow, pink, white and copper. I like how the more limited color palettes work. I'm making sure to separate the blocks before letting them dry so they don't stick to each other. I take back that the paints would need to be very fluid. Opaque and heavy body paints seem to work at least on a hard and smooth surface like wood. Which side was your favorite? If you want to see how the cardboard puzzle squeegee painting turned out, check out this video next. See you there. Puzzle this time.